When you dive on a coral reef, about a fifth of the coral species you see were first catalogued and named by John Verong. The godfather of coral has been diving and studying Australia's Great Barrier Reef since 1972 and is now one of the most vocal lobbyists for its protection. This year, a combination of climate change and the El Nino Pacific weather system have created the conditions for the worst coral bleaching in history. Well, there's lots of coral that look, looks like this. And you can see the upper surface is white and the undersurface is still almost the normal colour of the coral. So it's always that upper surface that bleaches first. Uh, because of the and this guy, if it doesn't bleach anymore, will probably recover. But the way things are looking here, I think uh, all this coral over here will go this, this white colour. And um, that's the end of it. Once they expel all the algae, they die. Extreme heat has caused sea temperatures to rise about one degree Celsius above normal over recent months, enough to cause bleaching on 95% of corals on the pristine northern reef. The US National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration says this is now the world's third mass bleaching event since 1998, a pattern not seen in modern times. It's the El Nino years that are worst because that's when we get uh, slightly higher sea temperatures and that's what's causing the trouble at the moment. Australia's Coral Bleaching Task Force has declared the situation worse than two previous mass bleaching events in 1998 and 2002. Corals can regenerate over time if water quality and temperature conditions are supportive, but global warming is increasing the frequency of extreme heat events and scientists are worried the reef's very survival is under threat. There's nothing at all to stop one El Nino wiping out the Great Barrier Reef within months. That's the problem. If um, an El Nino can cause one reef to bleach, then it can cause all reefs to bleach, provided the weather conditions are conducive to it. It's like Russian roulette. It, uh, it just has to wait for the right combination of temperature and light and then it's all going to happen. Maybe not next year, maybe not in 10 years time, but it will happen. It means absolute catastrophe if we lose coral reefs. Not just the loss of coral reefs themselves, but coral reefs are home for about a third of all marine species at some point in their life cycle. So if we lose coral reefs, then a third of all marine species go with it. And when that happens, you've got a massive ecological catastrophe. Scientists say not enough is being done to curb greenhouse gas emissions, despite the Paris Agreement, which aims to keep global temperature rises below 2 degrees. For coral reefs, even this degree of warming could prove fatal. Jamie Smith, Financial Times, Orpheus Island.